Hello you guys, and welcome back to another episode of Duelist Tables, episode 3. I'm your host, Solid Mercury, and this is a segment in Yu-Gi-Oh! information and, you know, beyond, pretty much. So, uh, for the most part, right now, we're still in the uh, early stages. I'm discussing with you guys uh, different things for old players entering a new game, or new players even just coming into the game, I guess, uh, so that people know what you know, things are. Uh, last time we talked about terminology, before that was uh, kind of my background in Yu-Gi-Oh! and what's been going on. So, feel free to watch those. They will uh, help light some information on uh, what kind of stuff we like to do. So, uh, without further ado, let's get into this. So, uh, for today's episode, we've got uh, two more topics for my original script to go through and original script I mean like uh, kind of just a what I kind of plotted out as bullet points <laughs> because uh, yeah it, it started out as terms and then now we've got styles and the meta are left and these will kind of flow together these last two so uh, hopefully I'll be able to get them done today and it does not look like we're going to have my little co-host with us today. Although I think I just heard my other cat. If you end up seeing her somewhere in the background, uh, yeah, feel free to uh, enjoy that one. Yeah, if you see one of the cats, just go and like the video. Then it should be just like a standard if one of the cats shows up. Uh, no, so. Styles in Yu-Gi-Oh! So there's a lot of different ways this can go. Uh, styles can mean a lot of things, and I think I kind of meant it to be co kind of a uh, how you like to play Yu-Gi-Oh! And how that kind of goes through. Like, uh, I like to play Cyber Dragons, and Cyber Dragons are a powerhouse card. Or a powerhouse deck type, I guess. Uh... Which is how I like it, you know? I like the all-or-nothing struggle that I go through at points. Because winning uh, before one of my cards goes off is... It's very rewarding. Because it's that I have... As soon as I activate this card, I have one turn to try to win in a lot of cases. Otherwise, I'm pretty much going to end up just knocking myself out and taking out all of my life points. So, um, yeah, so, actually, just to kind of prove a point, can you tell what I like? Oh, right there. I hand drew this on my deck case for my Cyber Dragons. And actually, kind of funny, for four years I was using these card sleeves. I finally changed them out. They are now my extra deck card sleeves. But, yeah, I... If you can tell, I do not like change. But, uh, that's beside the point. So, different styles, you know, there's something there for everyone, and... You can always find something. Like, I run a second deck that is Ghost Tricks. Ghost Tricks are probably one of the trolliest things you can play with, as it's... It's pretty much meant to just piss off your opponent. And it's also one of the slowest decks you can play. Like, ungodly slow. And sometimes, like, I tried to play it fast. Like, I literally took a half a minute per turn that I had at one point. And the match still took about half an hour. Or, I'm sorry, the duel took about a half an hour. The match took about an hour. So kind of just showing like how that one can go like it's it's supposed to take a long time but even then it's it's not always you too it's kind of an issue that comes up but uh so there's different things you can do and also my headphones aren't on my head this time i, I realized that like halfway through uh, the previous episode uh, i had no reason for these to be on my head uh, so yeah, no, um, so, with this whole thing, 
uh, styles kind of go down to what kind of things you like to play. Like, for me, my serious deck is always going to be my Cyber Dragons. Because I like them the most, I like how they play, I like their functions, and quite frankly, they're so nostalgic to me, I can't give them up. And my for fun deck is the Ghost Tricks, because that's, I want to sit there and I want to mess with my opponent for, you know, an hour. Because it, it really is fun. But there's other things beyond that, like, uh, the ghost tricks play off of a flip engine. They flip your opponent. They flip all the cards basically face down. So you're pretty much just playing a. Uh, I'm going to control the field by making your field irrelevant, and I'm just going to go straight past you, which is an effective strategy. It takes a bit of work, but it can really run fun, and it I have fun with it. Uh, now, from like you've heard my two strategies basically for it, my decks, both of them are kind of on different planes. On one hand, I've got uh, my Cyber Dragons, which are rough powerhousing cards. They build up to the big guy and then just go straight for the win. And it is a legit strategy to do that. It does work, but it doesn't always work. Then you've got my other deck, which plays off of the style of, uh, you know, let's let's try to control everything. And they're completely different styles. They're they're different strategies. They're different styles. They play completely differently. Uh, and quite frankly, it's one of those things like you know you. You might not be good at one deck type, but you might be really good at another type. And you never know until you try, and that's why part, probably why uh, some of the programs are so useful. Holy crap, it's already at seven minutes. Alright, so with that, like, uh, just to make it kind of go a little bit faster, I guess. Um, so my wife and I have been playing for a bit against each other, and she likes fairies. So that's her style. She likes fairies. Fairies play a controlling type too, which works. It works for her. She is good at control. She's good at holding down your opponent and pretty much just taking away their options. And it works for her. Now, you might not have the style that you want or you might not have found what you need to play your style yet. But don't worry, you can find it. Worst case, you know, ask people what type of deck they're playing and, you know, how they work. Uh, and eventually you can find something. You might have to take somebody else's ideas or something like that just to get yourself started. But, hey, if it works, it works. And sadly, that can bring us right around into the latter point of this, the meta. For those of you who don't know, the meta is essentially, for the term section, I guess, uh, <coughs> one second. A little dry throat. So the meta essentially is just um, this center of the gaming. Uh, so it's what, it's what uh, people run at tournaments on a regular basis. There's a major decks and such, and they, they kind of suck. Like they're always, it, it's what you'll run into at a tournament on average, which at the moment is Necros, Shadows, Cleeforts, Satellar Knights, and Burning Abyss. They are the meta currently, and they're, they're not bad decks, but. They're so copy pasted anymore that there is no original fun with that deck anymore. It is all just kind of. It's all the same stuff. And that doesn't help anything. It is. It is stupid how some people play the meta because some people literally. Literally play the same thing as somebody else because they see somebody else play that deck and it wins. So they find out what was in that deck and they copy the entirety of it. 
I'm not saying that's bad. I'm saying it's lazy. If you're going to want to play a deck, pick it up and try it. Figure out what you need on your own. The meta is a stupid set of cards that just don't make sense. Like, why Why are these things winning? Because this person played it, and because that person played it, that person's going to play it. And because that person played it, that person's going to play it. And now, everybody going to the tournament that can afford this deck, which in the case of Necros, is pretty much... you, you got to have hundreds of dollars, which... Oh, dear God, how stupid that is. But because people have won with this deck, other people play with this deck. So now they're playing in the meta. And the meta grows because this deck is winning and people are taking it because it's winning. And it's one of those that's just so stupid. Why do you need to do this? The meta is... Like, the meta's fine, but you should really come up with your own thing. If you take advice from another person, that's fine. I took advice from my Cyber Dragons at one point because I didn't see the point of uh, Cyber Network one of my traps and how that thing runs is I literally send cards from my uh, I, I send a card from my deck out of play I banish it from my deck once per turn I'm like I don't get how this is supposed to help me because the, the card lasts three turns Every one of my standby phases, it counts up one. So at three, at the third standby phase that it's been out for, it gets destroyed. And on the third standby phase, any white machine type monsters that are it that are removed from play at that time come back. I never realized how good that was until I started reading more effects and finding out. And this was thanks to another player that was playing a uh, Machina Cyber deck. And it was really cool to find this out because it actually has helped me uh, play my deck better. So taking advice from somebody is fine. Flat out copying their strategies, I think that's not cool. It's you, There's originality that should be taken into play. You should really play with your own deck. And by own deck, I don't mean uh, you own the cards. No, I mean you should come up with your own deck to play. Now, of course, there's only so many cards. Actually, no, there's a ton of fucking cards. But uh, <laughs> you can pretty much... Anybody can have their own deck. Yeah, some people are going to come into the same ideas. Especially with uh, the 40 card minimum, 60 card max. Some people... Like, a lot of people like to play the minimum amount of cards so they try to stick around 40 and some people literally build their decks up which I don't understand how they can do this so much they build their deck and it's 40 cards exact and the 40 cards exact are with extra cards to fill in space I don't know how they do that unless they literally pick like a half an archetype and go okay so, next, you know, I've got this archetype that's like 25 cards. Let's put 7 cards of draw power, uh, 3 cards of uh, negating my opponent's stuff, you know, stopping their attacks or whatever. And then I've got 5 cards I can rotate out, which are probably just like Mystical Space Typhoons for 3 of them. And then... Uh, you know, something that's just very generic. And they fill out their deck that way. I'm like, how the hell did you manage to do that? Because I look at my deck, I'm like, just the minimum cards I need for my Cyber Dragon archetype? I've, like, I've got, like, pretty much every card spot filled in. Like, I've run about 20, tra or 20, 20 spells at a time because there's that many spells that I need. I run three power bonds. Three of them. Power bond is strong. And it works. And it, like, on my deck, I pulled it down. I sadly, I removed freaking uh, 
two of my cyber dragons from here in the sets of three because it was Proto and uh, Zui, Zui, or you want to call it. Uh, they're both they're both all right, but they aren't what the deck needs to play. They kind of need to be. Uh, they're they're not necessary at the moment because you play them. You have to get them on the field to be able to use them. Whereas, the Cyber Dragon obviously itself is uh, perfectly fine to stay in your hand, but uh, Proto definitely can't be in the deck anymore. It's it's only ever Cyber Dragon while it's on the field, which doesn't work. So. Yeah, I really got off on a tangent here. Uh, yeah, we'll save the Cyber Dragon talk for another day. Uh, for the most part, though, uh, you know, it's the meta is the meta is good, but the meta is bad because the meta follows the styles of decks that people copy. Somebody comes up with, they take it, like there's about five different versions that really go to a tournament you know when a deck structure comes out and they've already pretty much been tested through because of the programs we've got because we know what's coming ahead of time so we already know what everything is and how they're going to function so it's literally just play test and see how well that deck actually functions against everything else at a tournament and at that point if they keep winning they become the meta and if they become the meta, everybody copies it. And that is... <sighs> so, basically that's how you kind of end up with the same things uh, being played at all times. Uh, multiple people playing the same decks and whatnot. Uh, so, it's not... The meta is not bad, but it's not a good thing. So, it's a good idea to try to... Like, you can play a, a deck that's currently meta... But that's not really, you know, what I'm trying to go after is more of a, you don't need to play the the deck that uh, everyone else is playing. Instead, you can play your own thing and you can just know how they work uh, for yourself. So that way you don't have to worry about whether or not the deck is going to be, uh, you know, too hard to beat because, you know, you don't know the rulings. So instead, you can know the rules for that deck, how that thing works, and you can find ways to beat it. And you can you can technically be uh, the rogue player, playing something that will beat the meta, and that is a very yeah that that's a good way to go because that way you're just kind of you're kind of there just you're not in the meta you're not being you're not being part of this group that is all the same every single time you're part of you know the different decks you're part of the variety because variety is good and just copying each other on a daily basis is it, it's kind of stupid to just everybody uses the same thing so basically uh, what I'd say is the point of this is for the meta the meta is the meta is good but the meta is the main set of decks that have won and everybody plays them and that's kind of bad that everybody plays them but it's good that the meta exists because it gives you a median to work around which means you can you can figure out how they work and how to beat them because everybody plays those so you've got plenty of resources to work from and you can just kind of go I want or to be able to beat the necros all right, what's a good way to go? Well, honestly, uh, stuff. There's plenty of things you can do, like uh, just to stop their spells, and it, without their uh, spells, they can't, you know, uh, tribute their monsters off, or you can stop them from tributing monsters flat out, so they can't uh, tribute monsters in at all for uh, their rituals. There, there's stuff you can do like that that will take care of the meta. And instead of having to worry about that, you're done. There, you can beat them down, and you no longer have to worry about the meta. Instead, you're now 
doing better than them. So uh, I think that probably wraps it up. Uh, we're around like we're a good ways into this thing. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I'm your host, Solid Mercury, and don't forget to like, fave, subscribe, you know, all that junk. Uh, down, uh, see, so like over here somewhere. You know, not, not the, not the dislike, the like, and then over here the subscribe button. You know, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Take care. Bye bye.